my experience, the Endymion Rock is a real unusual place. It's sort of a dead man's curve in the ocean where uh, a rock exists but just below the surface and isn't easily seen. When you first come across the Endymion site, one of the first things you'll see are the anchors, the, the bow anchors of the ship, the anchors that were ready to go in the bow of the ship. And they're all quite close together. Then as you swim around a corner of the reef, you see a line of cannons. And it's odd because they're, they're not lined up as they would be perpendicular to what would have been the hull of the ship. They're all running fore and aft with the direction of the ship. So you can tell that the ship rolled over on one side. Which side? Well, it's got to be the port side because we know where the bow is. And once you know where the bow is and where the stern is, it's easy to figure out the sides. So we can see how the ship went down, how it rolled over, what happened to the cannons, all this after the wrecking event. But there are other more subtle clues like the location of the hull of the ship itself, which is still pinned down beneath tons of iron ballast bars all about a meter long and about six inches by six inches, heavy iron bars, hundreds and hundreds of them. They held the bottom of the ship down. Most people would probably miss that. Then there's a line of bronze pins uh, standing up about a meter sticking out of the seabed. Well, those went through the keelson and the frames and the keel of HMS Endymion. You can see them running in a straight line. That's the keel. It's the center line of the ship. All these clues come together. We, we, we're just surveying. We're not uh, excavating. If we were to excavate, we'd see all the, the small clues. We'd find out where the galley was. We would find out where the shot locker was. We would find out where the crew's quarters and the officer's quarters were in this uh, mass that's all conglomerated by the sea now. But the, the basic picture uh, is easy, easy to figure out. Also, we have this marvelous drawing, apparently done by the captain of the ship, showing the stern of the ship rising out of the water in the last few minutes of the ship's existence in air and sliding down into the reef. It's really wonderful. Another really interesting feature of this site is the fact that as you swim over HMS Endymion, you see this long, very heavy chain. We call it stud link chain. The, the links have a, a bar in the middle, so it looks kind of like a figure eight, massive thing. And it's, uh, it looks out of place and it's on top of everything. Every, there's nothing uh, of HMS Endymion that's above this chain. So obviously it came down later. If you follow it in one direction, it leads to what we call a stockless anchor, a type of anchor built in the 19th century and uh, existing probably to this day, but it, it's a kind of anchor that uh, you have uh, much later in time than HMS Endymion. So right away we knew that was contamination. If you follow the chain in the other direction, it leads right to the ship that uh, that anchor belonged to that also hit uh, Endymion Rock and also went down nearby in a, in a groove in the reef nearby. The first time I visited Endymion Rock, our main focus was the old ship, the HMS Endymion itself, that gave the, the rock its name. But uh, what's more important, I think, now after revisiting the site, is this uh, shipwreck nearby, partially overlying Endymion, that we call the Companion Wreck. And it's interesting because it has uh, a very early engine, a very early diesel engine. So here in one place we have an example from the age of sail uh, and skipped, skipping the age of steam altogether and moving right into the age of internal combustion engine powered ships. It's a, a fortuitous combination of two different types of shipwrecks. <laughs>